Hello guys, I am finally back with the second part of my Red Heart Granny Square sweater. I know it's been way too long and I'm sorry, I apologize for that. And I just realized I don't have a ball of yarn. Oops. Okay, I just wanna go over um, how I made my two sweaters and I, um, how I attach things and all that. So I've got grabbed a scrap ball of yarn, that'll work. All right, when I made my Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square Pullover, which I will picture here. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to assemble the squares so that the sweater fit the way I wanted and it wasn't too baggy. Um, if I did squares all the way across, it was gonna be way too big. So here's some of the Red Heart Granny Squares. So if I did three, it was going to be too, it wasn't going to be big enough. If I did four, it was going to be too big. So that's how I got started trying to figure out if I could make other shapes out of the Red Heart Granny Square yarn. And the very first other shape besides a square that I did was a rectangle. Because I figured out if I did a rectangle, then that would shorten this by an inch on each side, which would then make it um, fit much better and the way I wanted. If I left it this way for the front and then also did this on the back, it was going to be four inches too big. That's, that's a little bit too baggy. So I made granny square tri uh, rectangles <clears throat> and that worked perfect. And also because the rectangles turn out to be a little bit longer than the squares, allowed me to only have three rows instead of four and add enough length at the bottom to make the sweater long enough. So that worked out really well. So for the back, I did three rows like this and I would sew the two squares together and then add three or four rows, I think I did four rows of single crochet across the bottom of the squares, then attached the two rectangles to the side. And I did three rows that way, and then I sewed the three rows together, and that made the back. For the front, I did two rows that way, and on the third row, which was the top row at the neckline, I decided I wanted to do a split neck, and I have the sweater here, let's see. Uh, here it is right here. I decided I wanted to do a split neck, and so I knew the square, that wasn't gonna work with the squares the way I had it. So, I'm looking at it just to make sure, yeah. Okay, so what I wanted to do for the neckline was leave an opening up here. So I lined these up this way. And then I took and to see, would a square fit here or would a rectangle fit here best? You'll have to figure out for you what the math is and how things are gonna lay out properly for you. Um, for me, yeah, so I did, all I did was take my squares and move them to the outside, took these and added them to the inside and that allowed me to have a little gap right here. Right here. So I didn't attach these together at all. I sewed these together, again, putting some extra single crochet down here. And then I lined this up with that edge, lined this up with that edge, and that left me with about a one inch gap in the middle, which was perfect for the neckline. So when all was said and done, I sewed the front to the back at the shoulders, and then I did some ribbing around the collar and down the front on one side, attached it to the bottom, cut my yarn, did ribbing down the other side, attached it to the bottom on the other side, cut my yarn, and that gave me my neckline that I wanted. <clears throat> which was just like 
whoops, this. And I know it's black, so I know it's hard to see. I also made lots of notes and I have a diagram <clears throat> um, that's available for patrons and supporters. Um, you'll how many um, stitches for the ribbing that you do is going to be how that's going to depend on how you want your sweater to look, how high you want your um, neck collar to be. I think for here I did five, um, which means you have to start with six. I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but anyway, I also have fairly short arms, so when I made this, um, I realized that I didn't really a little end sticking out here. Let's push that towards the inside. Um, initially in the diagram I had three rows of granny squares for the sleeves, but I realized I do not have very long arms. I have short arms. I only need two. So I did two rows of granny squares and at the top of the sleeve I did like four more rows of single crochet and then I did a cuff. That worked out fine for me and that was great. Now, I did, as I was making that one, realize fairly quickly that I kind of wanted to see if I could do the same thing and <clears throat> make it a cardigan. Could I switch things around and just have it open all the way down the front? The answer is yes. Yes, I can. And um, so I did that. And I, I assembled it the same way. The only difference is I didn't attach anything down the center front and I put ribbing instead um, with holes for buttons and then I sold some white buttons on. Um, this one has not been blocked, but I have worn it. I love the way it fits. Um, and this worked out really well. I am, yeah, I really, I really am pleased with how these turned out. So if you want my notes, my um, uh, notes on assembly, my notes on how many stitches I did uh, for the ribbing and all of that stuff, the diagram, um, and then it is available in my patrons and um, supporters page over at Patreon. However, I am going to show you how I, um, my favorite way to join the squares and how I do the ribbing. Uh, my Patreon is not real expensive, it's fairly cheap, so um, go check it out. I have some more patterns coming that I'm going to film today. So, first thing you do is take, first thing you should do is lay it out and I safety pin or use stitch markers to pin all the pieces together and then try it on. Uh, make sure it's going to fit before you start doing any sewing. Now, I also have a, a mannequin and I use that. I did find the safety pins or stitch markers work best for attaching everything together. But you also could take a favorite sweater, jacket, shirt that you like the way it fits. Um, I understand that mannequins are expensive and not everybody can afford one or has room for one. But if you take a favorite shirt that you have and make a paper pattern, lay it out on a table or the floor, make a paper pattern of said shirt. And then you have a nice rough guide for width, sleeve length, and all of that stuff. So when you're assembling your granny squares, you can figure out, whoops. Okay, yeah, that's gonna work. but no, that's way too big. So this will give you a rough guide so you don't do all this assembly and then realize, crap, that doesn't fit and then have to rip it out because believe me, I've done that. I still have one thing I need to rip out <laughs> um, and frog. But anyway, it happens, but this will help you maybe prevent some of that. I think it's a really good idea. Once you get all that figured out and you get the fit figured out and do you want it to be a turtleneck? Do you want it to be a split neck? Do you want it to be a cardigan? Um, and you get the basic assembled. You're good to go and you can just do the ribbing. How do you assemble them? Well, 
There's lots of different ways to assemble granny squares. This is how my preferred method goes. Okay, I'm going to try to zoom in as I can. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook and the, the joining yarn. In this color, in this case, we're choosing colors, uh, particular colors on purpose that hopefully you can see on camera. Okay, so put your granny squares right side together. For me, I always know because I leave these until the end and then I know that's the wrong side. So put them right sides together. The corners have three single crochets. I'm sorry, yeah, three chains. So I'm gonna start in the center chain, put my hook in that one, in the middle of it, and then my hook in the middle of this one. Pull up a loop and single crochet. Then I'm going to put my hook in the front loop of the one nearest me and the back loop of the one on the underside. Pull through a loop, single crochet. So front loop, back loop. Oops. Front loop. back loop, front loop, back loop, oops, this yarn's a little slippery. <clears throat> oops. This is just some scrap yarn I had that was from a thrift store bag and this is left over from a ball. I don't particularly care working for it. It's a little slippery and it might be my hook but it might be the yarn, I don't know. Anyway, you keep doing that all the way down until your two squares are joined together and then you'll get this, which is my preferred way. You see this front ridge of the square but it's also joined in the middle now you could do it, in this case, I would probably do it in, in a white yarn, but you don't have to. You could do it in a blue. That actually looks nice. You could do whatever color you want. Um, but that looks good. Okay, so let's join this all the way down. Oops. Now when I use the Red Heart Granny Square yarn, I um, use a four and a half millimeter hook. We discussed this in the other video, which I will link in the video description. Um, there is mixed reviews about the yarn. Um, if you want perfection on your granny squares and the color changes, it might cause you more stress than just using different colors of yarn and weaving in the ends as you go. Um, I don't mind it. And I do mostly my crochet for like anxiety therapy. Um, I take it with me almost everywhere when we travel or go on long drives, all that stuff. So I just want something that's easy. Okay. I'll clip that. So now we have our two squares joined together, just like that. So I did the whole sweater that way. Whoops, wrong way. There we go. I did the whole sweater that way. And then once I had all the pieces assembled um, for the front and the back, I again, I showed them, sewed them together at the shoulders and how big you make your shoulders is gonna depend on how you want your sweater to fit. Um, and then once I had that done, I assembled the sleeves the same way I did the front and the back, only um, it was just squares with the ribbing at the top. And then I centered them over the shoulder seam and sewed them down. And then I did the underarm, sorry, the underarm and then down the side. And then once I had the basic sweater, then I could go rib everything. 
How did I do the ribbing? Well, there's probably other ways to do it. I only know one way, so I will show you. Um, we'll just start in the corner. Okay, so when I do the ribbing on things, unless I have a pattern which will tell me exactly how many stitches to do, um, I will attach the yarn to the piece, oops, and then I will chain this yarn. Uh, it's probably me. I had too much coffee this morning. I will chain until the chain is about how long I want my ribbing to be. Now when I have that I'll add one more. I'll go into the second chain from the hook and single crochet and then I single crochet all the way down in every chain Until you get to the bottom. And then I will slip stitch into the next stitch. Oops. And one more stitch. Then I'll turn it over and I'll single crochet in the front loop of the single crochets I just made all the way back up the other side. I swear I'm not usually this slow or clumsy. I had way too much coffee. Oops. Okay, when you get to the last one, chain one, turn around, and repeat. And what happens is you get something like that that starts to look like ribbing. Now, if you're doing your sleeve cuff, and you want to pull it in a little bit because just slipping uh, into two stitches is not is going to leave it pretty flat. You have two choices. One, you can do a row of single crochet on here before you start ribbing, and you can um, single crochet like two together the whole way down, or three together the whole way down, and, and bring it in. You can also, as you're doing the ribbing, slip stitch three or four, which will do the same thing and will bring it in. And that works for both the sleeves, the bottom of the sweater, and the neckline. So, very briefly, that's how I made my sweaters. And I really love the process. I love the yarn. It's a favorite of mine. And um, I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do, whether you use the Red Heart Granny Square yarn or you use other yarn. I make granny squares all the time here. This is more Red Heart yarn, by the way. But I make... I make all kinds of, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> um, if you want the written notes and instructions and ready access to me, um, then join my patrons and supporters. We not only have a Facebook Messenger chat, there's a live chat message, live chat feature over on Patreon. Um, I load the patterns, charts, drawings, notes, and all that stuff for them over there. Um, I also have a monthly post I do for them with um, digital downloads and inspiration word lists and all that stuff. So check it out. I also have stamp designs at Rubber Moon and at um, Art Foamies. 
all of which is listed in the video description, so check it out. I'm sorry this video took me so long. Um, I don't know why it took me so long, um, but it did. And anyway, um, I'm not going to leave these together because they're intended for another project. Um, but, you know, I hope this gives you some ideas. It is very easy. There's a lot of ways to join your granny squares other than the way I did. Um, you don't have to do it the way I did, um, but this is just my preferred way. I like that ridge that shows up on the front. This right here, I like, I like that. So, um, and what I'll usually do is make a bunch of the granny squares and then I will just um, sit in the car or something and start putting stuff together. Actually, it's very easy. So anyway, the hardest part is weaving in the ends. I actually hate that part, but you know, it's got to be done. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, I hope it gives you some ideas. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, please leave it down below in the, in the um, comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.